friends, welcome to Ask Dr. Betters. I want to encourage you that if the question you are asking is not sufficiently answered on any of our episodes, that perhaps it needs to be handled in a much deeper way. That's why we have, at Mark Inc. Ministries, begun a ministry called Anchored Hope Biblical Counseling. The best way to make an appointment with Anchored Hope Biblical Counseling is by way of our app. Just download at your favorite app store our Help and Hope app. That's what it's called. Help and Hope app. And there you will be able to make uh, an appointment with Anchored Hope Biblical Counseling or any of the other uh, ministries that we produce at Mark Inc. So I want to encourage you to do that. Sign up for our app at any of the app stores. It's called Help and Hope. And make your appointment with Anchored Hope Biblical Counseling. You know, we hear on TV all the time about athletes who are trying to do their very best on the, uh, in, in their line of work, whether it's baseball or golf or football, and they hire what they call sports psychologists. Well, that's kind of in line with the question that is coming from somebody named Tom. Tom is a golfer, and he has tried to become professional, which if you know anything anything about golfing, it is extremely difficult to get your PGA card. It takes a lot of success and a lot of work. And if you know anything about golf, which Tom does and it raises this question, it is a mental game as much as it is a physical game. Now granted, you have to have the physical tools to play the game of golf. But so much of golf is mental. Selecting a club, lining up a putt, uh, not having what they call the yips, and on and on the list goes. Golf is an extremely difficult sport. He says, you know, I've been trying to become professional. It's just like when I play, I sometimes feel like the devil holds me back because I have a lot of self-doubt. I know you and many others might say that it is not important in life, but it's been my life's work for me to get to where it means something to me personally, to improve to where I know I can be. So how would you stay in the present, one shot at a time, think positive, etc., from a biblical standpoint? And is sports of any interest to God? Can he control the outcome? Over the years, we have seen some unbelievable things in all sports. I'd be interested to hear your point of view. You know, I was raised on the ball field, and there were many critical points in many of my games where a key hit at a key time or a key play or a key pitch would have won us the game. And I must admit, as a kid growing up, there were many times I prayed, Lord, just Give me the strength right here to be able to get the base hit, to be able to score the run, to be able to make the right slide, etc. Only to realize that so many times, maybe more than often, I failed. Because as one person told me one time, don't you think there's other people on the other side of the ball diamond, on on that other bench over there, or that, that guy you're playing against? who's also praying? Don't you think that the coaches of the other team are also wondering whether or not God would intervene? You know, we in Philadelphia Eagles history, we we talk about the miracle at the Meadowlands where a football was run back for a touchdown in an unbelievable way. And, And so it got labeled the miracle of the Meadowlands where the Eagles uh, beat the New York Giants. Was it really a miracle? Uh, Do we want to start labeling sports successes miracles? Aren't there Christians on both sides of the ball praying for a victory? Well, I think you know where I'm going with this. The question is not whether or not God is into your game, whether or not he wants you to win. 
So what does the scripture have to say about this? I look around sometimes at some of the professional ball players who are the furthest thing away from God that you could possibly get. And yet they're successful. But isn't that true of all of life? Don't we look around and we see the successes of people who have no interest in glorifying God? What does Jesus have to say about that? Well, in Matthew uh, chapter 6, he talks about prayer and how we should pray. And he says, he says, when you pray, Matthew 6 verse 5, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. You know, sometimes in this life, you have all of the reward you're ever going to get. In the case of the hypocritical prayers, he says, well, they've been seen by men. Men are looking at them. Men are watching them. Men are concluding things about how spiritual they are because they're watching them pray, but they're praying like hypocrites. And so what does Jesus say? That's their reward. They have it. That's all they're going to get. I look at some of the professional golfers uh, who, who love the Lord Jesus Christ. They have great success, and, and at times they have great failures. But I especially look at those who have had tremendous success, um, maybe success that no others have had, and they don't celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe there's some occultic religion and I look at them and I say, why is God blessing them? Well, according to Matthew chapter 6, they have their reward. That's all they're going to get. They're going to be known as a champion. But one day, they're going to stand before God, and they're going to give an account for their life. Not just for 20 or 30 years of a professional ball career, but for all eternity. They're going to stand before a holy God and give an account. One of the things, as I look around at some of the Hollywood crowd who don't think anything about Jesus, uh, and I, I say, well, they've, they've got their reward. They were great actors. They were great, great actresses. But then they, di then they died the, the same way the rest of us do. When you read the Old Testament, great kings, great prophets, who did not follow after God. Many of them, it says, and then they died. They served X number of years, and then they died. Well, you know, my counsel to you really comes directly from Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, he says in verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Maybe that's a good way to line up a butt. With thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Thanksgiving that he gave you the ability to do what you're doing. Some people don't have that ability. Some, I used to play golf with a guy who had no hands. And just to watch him uh, manipulate a golf club with no hands was an amazing thing to watch, but he always had a smile on his face. But here's the key for you. Whatever you do, verse 17 of Colossians 3, whatever you do in word or deed, does that include golf? Of course it does. Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Thank you, Lord, that I lost. Thank you, Lord, that I won. Thank you, Lord, that I sunk that putt. Thank you, Lord, that I hit a 300-yard drive. Thank you, Lord, that I shanked it. And on and on the list goes. To be able to, whatever you do, do it for the honor and the glory of God. That's the best sports psychology I could recommend for you. Hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked.
We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.